Casper! Let the ferocious guard dogs out. Nope, we haven't found Salem's collar yet. Casper used his smart teeth to unlatch it and can't find it yet, but we'll keep searching in the yard. The ladies have decided to fight this morning, but it's time to be milked. Come on! They're all ganging up on Tilly there. The red one. Hold on. Prim's on a diet, so she gets one little handful. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Ethan is gonna help milk today. Yeah. How fun is that? <laughs> Are you already done already? She likes to eat all. Yeah. Um. Gotta be patient now. You gotta wait. You can lick up the dust. It's so amazing to me that you can feed your entire goat herd the exact same feed and minerals and grain and some get fat or what we call in the goat world over conditioned while some have a hard time keeping on the weight and you're trying to feed them more. Now sometimes this can be due to one goat being a bully or trying to hog all of the food but it's not really happening in this case because Kevin's feeders are pretty well designed. There's lots of places for them to eat and we don't really see a lot of fighting happen during feeding time so I think it must just come down to genetics. So little Prim here is going to get a little bit less grain and we're going to see if that maybe helps a little bit with her weight. Extra fat can work its way into the shoulder blades and make these shoulders a lot looser. In the goat world, we want their shoulders to lay nice and flat against their rib cage, and it just helps them keep this nice, strong front assembly as they're walking around the pasture, moving about their day. Now, most goats will always shrink down on the stand and you'll see their scapula stick out. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have loose shoulders it's just kind of what goats do they always look their worst on the stand they tuck their rump they dip they don't really like the stand that much except for the treats so we usually like to always assess them when they're out in the pasture or on the move but just a little fun fact on why we try to make sure that they have the correct amount of weight as far as assessing all of the new babies this year we have unfortunately some sad news to share we were young and we were free and running Never bothered about what could be coming Every day we danced and life was smiling We were young and drunk in love <laughs> All right, bye Prim. Did good. Good job. See you later. Go get exercise. Aw. Luna wants some treats. She always watches us. Come over Come here. here. <laughs> so excited. Oh. Yum. Now I have. Now you have goat Gummies. nasty hands. There's more food over there. Than She's there. really good at moving over. So really? oh, you gotta let, you gotta hold on to her collar though. Well, you said she's really Well, good. I mean, she won't fight you. She just knows what to do. Come over here. Put your head <laughs> in the hole. You're right. You just told me to use their collar. They she, don't really quite get it. No, she's a good girl, though. Okay, you get a milk, Reba. Oh, I guess not. Is that too much? Am I getting too much? It doesn't matter. Look a little bit better, though. Yeah, her leg does look a little bit better. What happened? It I thought it was it's like arthritis. It's not nearly as collapsed at all. I don't know. I wonder if the cold made it worse. Maybe. Guys, Luna is doing so well. I really thought that we were gonna have to make some tough decisions back in the winter when she started limping, but it must have just been like the cold weather, even though it's only like 40, 50 degrees during the winter. But I don't know, she is 100% off of her pain meds. She's walking around like nothing happened. And this year in October, she's gonna be officially 13. So that's pretty old for a Nubian. So she's been with us since the kids were little. And a few months ago, we even made a plushie out of her. So you guys that all ordered one, thank you so much. And hopefully you've all received them by now. Hopefully you can love it as much as we love our Luna. But it looks so much better than it did. Well, You're doing good, a, Luna. She's been on a grass diet for almost a year. And yeah. so she's lost a lot of that baby weight. 
Huh. Doing good? Still kicking? So she just she just she doesn't really like my Okay, let's see. Do I a milk. squeeze. I'll do my normal, okay? She doesn't like how I milk either. But. She doesn't like how I squeeze. I cause I squeeze and I don't do like the L shape thing. Yep. Yeah, you don't oh, you do it different than really how I do it. You do like this. Mm-hmm. And she likes that better. I don't do Let's that. see. Keep going. We'll see if she kicks. Normally or your way? Do it your way. Maybe show you. Is that okay? You okay with that squeeze? It's not as comfy. I'm sorry. It's easier. She's fine. She just... She kind of shifts. Maybe it's flies. Maybe it's flies. You can, I can just see her like... You can like, feel it. Like she wants to. She definitely does the tilly lift her leg a little bit, but she's never really kicked the tail over. Yeah, I'll do this way. A twain, Ethan! A twain! You can barely see it in all the trees there. Yeah, they're desensitized like to if it. Like showed a clip of a goat reacting to it a long yeah. time ago. They would just stare dead in the eyes at it. You're doing good. It hurts to do your technique. Oh, does it? Your technique is tiring. All right, see you later. Oh, Luna. Luna, back for more. You can come in, but I don't think you know this ramp. She doesn't know the system. <laughs> never even used this ramp. She's just gonna eat that flaxseed. <laughs> Yum. Okay, you got a good treat. What happened? Did you jump in there? You jumped in here. Come on. Come on, honey. You're free. Those are some big babies. <laughs> There's Winona and Sh that's Shania. They're out of Daphne and Finnick. There's River My Doling that I bought from Wolva Van Ranch in California. These are the Tilly lines. We've got little Lola and Honey. So what's this bad news I speak of? Well, I've been paying close attention to the kids this year. We assessed them at about a week old, tried to rule out any serious problems, and then kept the ones that I thought looked the best. But unfortunately, about a month ago, I noticed some serious things with Lola, who is the cute little moon-spotted doe out of Tatum and Finnick. Now, she seemed a bit narrow in the rump at a week old, but I didn't wanna to judge too quickly. I know you guys all fell in love with her and she's super adorable. So I decided to keep her, raise her up and see how she did. But about a month ago, I noticed that Lola has really tiny teats. And as you guys know, that was sort of the original reason that we bred Tatum to Finnick, so that we could try to improve those tiny teats that Tatum had. But genetics are never a sure thing, and a kid can get traits from either parent or both parents. And unfortunately, in Lola's case, I don't think we got the improvement that we had hoped for. Typically, if you see tiny teats, you're gonna see a small amount of milk, and that's what happened with Tatum. And for milking goats, you know, you have gotta be a milker to be called a milking goat. On top of that, when we've taken Tatum to shows, the consistent feedback we've gotten from the judges is that she just has too small of teats, too small of a nutter, and she doesn't have dairy skin, because dairy skin is supposed to stretch and you need that stretch in order for the udder to fill up like it's supposed to. And in assessing Lola, unfortunately, she seems to have the same tough skin as Tatum. So all I can think of is we're really gonna just get a repeat of Tatum. Tiny udder, tiny teats, not a lot of stretch, not a very wide rump. When I compare Lola with her half siblings, there's a huge disparity in the width of the rumps and the teat size. So in the end, as hard as it is for me to say it, I don't think that Lola is going to be a solid breeding or milking doe. And she would be probably much better as a pet. 
I struggled for over a month with this decision and as I really thought about it, like why is this bugging me so bad? Why is this such a hard decision? I realized it just came down to her cute coloring. Like if I completely eliminated that and colored her colors into all black or something, I realized, okay, okay, I'm really only considering and hem and hawing over this because of the cute rare moon spots and coloring. And also I know how much you guys love her coloring and you would love to see her bread and all of that. And while I could breed her and I probably could sell cute little moon spotted babies for a lot, in the end I really need to focus on what is going to improve the health of this breed. As you guys know, my goal has been to become a more ethical breeder and really be strict about which ones I decide to breed. Each year is a lesson in learning to be better at what I'm doing, and the most important thing is to just keep improving traits, not worsen them. A big problem in the Nigerian dwarf breed is that one, they have exploded in popularity over the years because they're cute and they're miniature, they have cute colors, but with that popularity, that means it's becoming harder to sell them. Another big problem is that this breed is starting to suffer from a lot of different health issues and I think it's due to poor breeding choices that I and other breeders have made over the years. So in an effort to only breed the best and be confident in the quality of kids that I'm producing, we're gonna let Lola go as a pet. I know a few people might say, give Lola a chance, you know, just breed her one time and see how her udder turns out. But I always have to think about the kids that I'm gonna produce in that process and how I'm gonna be able to sell those kids if that udder doesn't turn out. Years ago, the old Danelle probably would have given Lola a chance and bred her just for those cute colors. But now that I've developed my eye and that I've talked to experts and learned about what type of body structure is gonna to contribute to the best health of a goat and what's gonna produce quality milking genetics. I can't ethically breed just for color. So Lola's gonna go as a pet and she will make an adorable little buddy for somebody. So we've had a lot of changes on our farm. A lot of goats come and go. So let's do a recap on who's here and the exciting plans that we have for them for the future. Okay guys, here's who we have on the farm. We've got our two bucks, Finnick is a year old, and then Lancelot is our new kid that we bought from Narrowgate Farm in Tucson. For the does, we have three does currently in milk right now, our two-year-old Daphne and one-year-old Reba and Prim. The babies we're raising up are Winona and Shania who are out of Daphne. Honey is out of Artilly, and River is from Wolvavan Ranch. Then we've got our three retired girls now, three, the old lady club. Luna is 13, Tilly is six, and Willow is five. So this is gonna be the herd this year. These are gonna be the does that we will breed, and I'm sure we'll have to make a lot more choices next year with all the babies. I do have a tentative breeding plan up on my website. You can check it out, and I have a few reservations left for next year. So if you're interested, I'll put a link in the comments. Here you go. Top places we look. Well, first in the place where they're supposed to lay the eggs, so go in there. I'm just gonna help us. No, she's not. Hi. Oh my god, Karen! You've turned into a brunette! What happened? Karen went from being black haired to like salt and pepper and now she's a brunette for whatever reason. Okay, then I don't see any in the first three boxes, which means you're gonna have to talk to that chicken in there. That's an old chicken. We had that chicken for a long time. Can I check real quick? Okay, there's nothing. Nothing? Oh, I see some. Get to them. Reach my hand into the yeah, black you have long arms. arms. Okay, guess we're gonna each have to have a half an egg this morning. Uh -huh. Luna just stands here and like watches yeah. the whole time. Oh, hi. She's hoping for more treats. Yeah. You know the way out, right? Go down the ramp. There you go. Bye. People always say that Daphne looks pregnant, but she's not pregnant. She has really good dairy skin that stretches, so her rumen stretches a lot as well. So she has a very stretchy barrel, but definitely not pregnant. What happened? <laughs> 
happened to this thing? <laughs> That's why there's twine. You're supposed to not. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh. I didn't even notice the twine. How am I supposed to get in here? Uh, <laughs> I don't think. No, stop. You, uh, I don't think you're don't supposed think to I'm be going. able to untie it. I, I think you just pour it. There you go. Good job. Hold on, I gotta film how to. You're crazy. He's getting big. He's getting big and he's getting strong. So if you can't grab him. Stay there, Finnick. Right there. That's perfect. Stay there. Stay there, Finnick. Stay there. We won't do any more. Ah. Oh, I think we might have got it. We might have got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you smell like a smelly buck. Does that feel good? Good job. He is a big boy. Yeah. Finnick is a bit nuts but he has great genetics and we're excited to see what his daughter's udders look like when they freshen so um we love him but he is definitely tricky to catch he was damn raised but he was also given a bottle by us when he got here but he's always just been kind of a little bit of a jerk <laughs> he just has he is to the ladies he's just kind of he's very i love his hairdo though look yeah, at that i know that is awesome i wish my hair did that <laughs> let's launch hi buddy you look so handsome casper wants to say hi be gentle Come here. this one you do have to go in because you have to put it in his house oh he's got a little beard and little eyebrows, and he's got little skurs growing that we gotta get off. Oh man. Let's see if he'll walk with you a little bit. <laughs> he likes me more than you, he wants to come to me. Good boy. We're excited about Lancelot, our new little buckling that we are gonna raise up. He is already really friendly because he was bottle fed and we're hopefully gonna keep him that way so that he's easy to work with when he's a big smelly buck. Peach season is in full force over here and we're loving it. So today we're gonna make a classic peach cobbler. The thing about Arizona peaches is you can't really cut them in half and expect them to separate properly. Because we get hot so fast, the peaches sort of meld together and your best option is just to slice around the pit and be grateful that you can grow peaches. So I am not going to attempt to take the peels off of these because really who cares and I don't think my grandma is watching. So in an attempt to make this a classic dish, I'm not gonna go for the healthier options. I'm not going to use my honey. We're just going to go full sugar. And that's what the recipe said to do. So I'm just following the recipe. We'll add some sugar to the peaches and we'll sort of cook that down a little bit. Meanwhile, we'll add more sugar <laughs> to our batter mixture. Now you can use a store-bought cake mixture for this, but it's pretty simple from scratch. You've just got your flour, your sugar, your baking powder, your salt, a little bit of cinnamon, and then some milk to pull it all together. Put some butter in the pan. I know it seems like a lot, but peach cobblers kind of kind of demand a lot of butter. Spread it out, add your peaches. Don't worry about mixing it. Top it with some cinnamon and let it bake. In the end, we have this gooey, bubbly, perfect for summer cobbler. So you can try some healthier versions, but I'm gonna put the straight up tried and true version in the description below. Okay, it's time for my unwrapping of my blue cactus dairy goat soaps. Now my friend Crystal, as you know, lives three hours from me, but we're best friends because we both have goats and she knows how to make soap and I don't. So I've got cranberry orange. I'm definitely more into the like minty or, or citrusy. I'm not as much into the earthy stuff, but I love, oh, I love rosemary. Is that an earthy scent? Here's my favorite. Cucumber mint right here. And then another citrusy lemon lime. Goat's milk is really identical to the makeup of our skin. And so that's why goat milk soap is so popular and why I'm in love with it and I use it all the time. So this is a plug for Crystal Soaps. If you haven't tried them, she has an Etsy shop 
where you can get them shipped to you. And she's got a ton of options depending on your scent preferences. So help a friend out and go try out her soaps.